interesting, uh, interesting sounds there. You okay? Okay. Okay. For those who are unaware, uh, Julie is the mother of my social media manager who's here filming today. So if you hear two people laughing, not one, that's not a bug on the audio. That's, that's two people laughing. Okay. So... <laughs> Julie, good to meet you. Thanks nice for coming to meet in today. You, Dr. Adam. Uh, what, I'm so I still get weirded out when people call me Doctor Adam. I don't know why, but yeah, no, good to, good to meet you too. You thank, thank you, Julie. Um, what uh, what brings you in today? For me, I'm experiencing pain mm -hmm. that, um, and I'm I'm pain. I, I live with a lot of pain in my life because I've I've had fibromyalgia mm -hmm. for about seven and a half years, mm -hmm. but um, lately it's been in my shoulders, which okay. is kind of unique for me, um, just in behind the right and the left and in the hip area okay more so on the right side mm -hmm. versus the left that affects the knee got it okay now i think i just but when we were talking briefly before the camera came on you were referencing that the shoulders in particular have been bothering you more so lately um right. was that with a specific activity or a specific sport or was there something that it was getting in the way i think it was pickleball mentioned but i can't recall it yeah. was mentioned mm -hmm. and but i haven't been playing okay. um for the last several weeks mm -hmm. and you know i in the past, when I have played pickleball, mm -hmm. it, I have kind of tw not torn anything, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a movement that I, I is un hasn't been that familiar mm -hmm. for me, and I, I might have injured it. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's from that, but I haven't played in about um, uh, three weeks. I did three go weeks, back okay. last week, mm -hmm. and I played one match, and it, it did aggravate a little more, but okay. it was there prior mm -hmm. to playing. Okay, so yeah. shoulder issue that's been bothering you for a while now, but it's been aggravated with the activity right yes uh, tell us a little bit more Do, uh, well actually does that kind of give you any kind of upper back or neck issues with that or what would you say I do get stiffness mm -hmm. in the neck yeah mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I wanted to mention and mm -hmm. I don't know to me it's related all with mm -hmm. the neck so I have tinnitus okay. I've had it for a mm -hmm. long long time mm -hmm. but on the left side okay. and a little bit on the right now okay. so mm -hmm. I've learned to live with it yeah. <laughs> it's not always optimal when mm -hmm. you're trying to fall asleep and you've got this loud mm -hmm. uh, ringing in your ears yeah. yes mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, so it, it uh, yes, it does affect the, the neck. Mm -hmm. Okay. More, yeah. more of the pain is felt is in the shoulders. So the shoulders, the neck, and the upper back, they're all very intimately connected biomechanically. What does that mean? That means that when you have an issue with any one of them, you it's a matter of time until you develop issues with the other two, unless you address whatever the issue. So in this case, it looks like Julie here was kind of developing this uh, this bilateral shoulder issue. Is it because of the chronic pain condition? Is it because of the fibromyalgia? Maybe not because of it, but that's definitely gonna exacerbate the perception of pain. Um, now, it looks like that bilateral shoulder issue has begun to spread into that neck and the upper back. That's okay, see it all the time. We can do what we can for it. Um, why don't we talk about the hip? The hip, again, similarly to the neck, and the uh, upper back in regards to the shoulder can also affect the knee as well as the lower back. So what's going on with the, uh, with the hip? Yeah, so I do a lot of yoga. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm constantly stretching it out and, and mm -hmm. I need to do that. And in fact, before I go to my yoga class, mm -hmm. I go 10 to 15 minutes early just to stretch and mm -hmm. uh, like good. deeply Very stretch good. because mm -hmm. otherwise um, it's hard for me. But uh, a lot of like stiffness and then sometimes pain in the right hip mm -hmm. and it affects um, the, the right knee okay. so yeah. mm -hmm. um, so I go and I make sure that I stretch the the hip and it helps to loosen up the mm -hmm. knee as well so how, if I can ask how did you figure out that the hip and the knee were connected in that sense uh, a masseur a mas uh, masseuse. masseuse a masseuse, masseuse. told you that yes Do you, are you still in contact with that masseuse that's a damn good masseuse right. if that's the case right. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so yep no sorry you, you... Uh, yeah I try to go for massages every mm -hmm. maybe every two months okay I'm good. trying to mm -hmm do that on a more regular basis okay. and really mm -hmm. look at my whole kind of health protocol and mm -hmm. having you know massage um seeing a an naturopath and mm -hmm. kind of T know, take take care of yourself from that wellness perspective yeah. Right? right yeah so yeah. the reason i say that that's a good masseuse is because 
the hip and the knee being so connected in that sense isn't really common knowledge amongst manual practitioners, especially not masseuses, because there's actually no educational requirement to become one. There is an educational requirement to become a massage therapist, as that's a regulated profession, but anybody can just call themselves a masseuse. So this individual sounds like they actually kind of knew what they were talking about, because that hip to a knee relation isn't even known to a lot of physios and chiropractors. So I'm very impressed with that individual in particular. And that's true. The most common reason that I see knee pain in here is due to either a hip or an ankle issue right in this case it is a hip uh, of course that's barring any kind of actual trauma or progressed degeneration within the knee itself now I know you also have that history of surgery within the knee which probably doesn't help either Correct. but how like how uh, since you had it was ACL repair I had ACL but also yeah. torn meniscus okay. problem yeah, mm -hmm. and so um, still get pain mm -hmm. I think there is some residual so the, the surgery I had on the knee was to repair the ACL mm -hmm. but it also took, they did some um, meniscus work and then I think it, there's still some more issues with it, but okay. I want to stay away from yeah. the surgery. So per, ideal, ideally, yes. So yeah. I, I, I stay away from like high, any high impact activities. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, lateral activities, mm -hmm. like for me, um, we were playing tennis mm -hmm. and it, it, like movement side to side. And That's a little f scary for you. Uh, right. Okay. So yeah. I, mm -hmm. I stick to low impact, like okay. walking, mm -hmm. uh, yoga, biking, swimming. And I just took up pickleball. Which and you find that those kind of help decrease the pain sensation that you're dealing with? I, I, I can handle, uh, the knee takes it uh, better than other activities. I still Good. will sometimes have some tenderness and soreness after I started, um, this one makes me giggle, but ballroom dancing. Oh, that's fun. That's it is, fun. but that's yeah. the hardest thing on my knee. And okay. is, yeah. is because mm -hmm. of like the movement, right? Whereas, you know, if I'm doing yoga, it, it, I'm, I'm very... Uh, purposeful and how I move and mm. stretch and uh, you know obviously walking there is one forward motion versus mm -hmm. sideways and etc so, mm -hmm. um, so yeah so I've learned to kind of build my life and my activities around my capabilities mm -hmm. without you know uh, feeling like I'm lacking anything. yeah well no that's really good because I mean to me like just even talking a little bit like you're very active that's very good okay like you're, you're fit and that's that's something that's difficult to do when you have been dealing kind of with the medical history that you've told me about, right? Like, so yes. do you want to elaborate on that a little bit more or would you rather kind of leave that be? No, I can elaborate right. on it, okay. uh, mm. but it's been a journey for me. Of so, mm. you know, from, um, and Santina can attest to this from, mm. and this is when I get a little bit emotional because if, if I kind of go back there eight years ago, um, from not being able to get out of bed, mm -hmm. uh, from like even bending down to pick up, uh, being in, in intense pain, not yeah. being able to walk my dog, mm. Um, to where I am today has been a whole um, holistic journey of healing mm -hmm. from the inside out because mm -hmm. there was a lot of emotional yes. um, mm -hmm. stuff that had to be dealt with and I'm still dealing with it mm -hmm. um, and a lot of healing from the inside out and then just learning about my body mm -hmm. and, and why it got to, so depleted because mm -hmm. that's what it was. it was it you know fibromyalgia for me because I don't want to say what it is for other people mm. was a state of complete depletion mm. emotional mental physical spiritual mm. so it's been uh, eight years of learning how to um, get back my health mm. use you know using or working with health different health pr practitioners and also being an advocate uh, of my own health okay well Thank you for sharing that. I know that everybody can experience chronic pain conditions very differently. Chronic pain is a, excuse my language, it's a, it's a bitch of a disease, okay? It can affect everybody differently and that's what makes studying it such a complicated endeavor for a lot of people. Right. Um, I did make two full videos about kind of like my perspective on it and what's taught in modern chiropractic curriculum at least. I'll link them um, up in the corner there if you're interested in watching them later and I'll, we can talk about it off camera too some more if you'd like. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do for today mm -hmm. is we're going to focus in on uh, the shoulders and probably the hip as well as the neck and upper back that are now being affected by the shoulders, potentially the lower back and the knee too, okay? Uh, we'll do a full physical exam and we'll figure out how I can help you, okay? Sounds great. Sound good? Perfect. Thank you. All right, so Julie, to get started, I'm going to get you to bring your chin down to your chest for me. Does that provoke any kind of neck discomfort, any pain to the shoulders, anything at all? No. No? Okay, and you should look up towards the ceiling for me now. How about that? That's still okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Face forward. I want you to rotate your head as far as you can to the right, please. We can get to, oh, no, just keep it. Good. We can get to about 80 degrees now as far as you can to the left. We can get to about 65, 70 degrees, so a little bit of a decrease on the left side as compared to the right. Which side shoulder is bothering you more? Left or right? Okay. 
currently it's the right okay. back here, but this usually has been, it's the left. This is yes, okay. and my uh, reg registered massage therapist mm. has worked a lot on the shoulder okay. with the impulses and the mm. yeah. Okay, so I'll get you to tilt this here down to this shoulder. And he got a lot of hair here, so yeah. I, think I that's was wondering if I should tie it up. No, oh, no, I, I, I can work okay. around it. I've seen more, but this is okay. quite a lot. Get you to tilt left to left. That. That's okay. And we got okay, perfect. So that's fine too. All right. So shoulder screening. We got to check the rotator cuff muscles. See if any of them are aggravated. I'll get you to start by just bringing your right arm straight up. Give me a thumbs up. Keep it there. Okay. Don't let me move it. Fight, fight, fight. Does that trigger any discomfort in the shoulder? No. No. Okay. Give me a thumbs down. How about that? No. No, perfect. Okay, relax, relax. Bend the elbow, good. And I want you to fight, push your arm into my hand as hard as you can. Does that trigger anything there? Um, a, a little bit discomfort. A little bit discomfort. Where you're feeling that? Kind of on the back aspect. Mm -hmm. eh? Okay. So that yeah. is a internal rotation movement there. She's feeling that in the back aspect. So perhaps a little bit of subscapularis involvement there. Um, I'll walk you through that afterwards. Okay. You need to push your hand into it as hard into my hand as hard back. as you can. Yep. Well, that's the part that's. That's the part that really hurts there. Okay. Yeah. So it's that external rotation movement that triggers her the most. What's the rotator cuff muscle that does external rotation? That's our infraspinatus. So we'll be working on that today. So that triggered you the most. Huh? All right. Let's check over on this side. We'll get you to give me a thumbs up over here. Keep it right there. Fight for fight. That's okay. Yep. Give me a thumbs down. Fight for fight. That's okay. Yep. Okay, good. Come back up. We're going to do the same thing. Fight for fight. Fight into me. Or push the hand into me, excuse me. There we go. Does that trigger anything? Not really. No? Okay. We're going to go the other way. Push, push, push. Same deal. I'm not getting pain. No pain. Good. Not Put this like hand behind your back for me. Yeah. Does that... Oh, no. You can do that no, really. No, but I yeah. can... Yeah. Very flexible. Mm, okay, yeah. good. And long arms. <laughs> okay. So, of the left side, mm -hmm. none of them were really bothering you that much, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when was the last time that this had a serious flare up? Few, um, four or five months ago. Okay, so it's been a while. You could almost say that it's been quote unquote good. It lately. has been good lately. Good, okay. When it does happen, do you feel discomfort most on the front or the back aspect? Mm. <laughs> Probably in the back. But Probably deep, in the back. Deep, deep. yes. Deep. She, she does the electrodes that mm -hmm. in here. Yeah. Okay. So it's always tricky to try to figure out what's going on when a patient isn't showing positive tests or on an older injury, one that has since uh, recovered to a degree. But when she does say she's feeling her pain on the back of her shoulder, that does kind of limit down the potential options for where most of the pain could be generated from. So again, posterior shoulder, we're dealing with the infraspinatus, we're dealing with the teres minor. Um, we might be dealing with the joint capsule itself or maybe the labrum. There could be a potential small labral tear. That being said, I'm doubtful if that's the case because if it is a labral tear, you're going to be feeling that pretty much all the time. Uh, so it's potential that we do get that infraspinous involvement on this side too. And that kind of makes sense to me that uh, th that would be my leading diagnosis for the left side. Given that the right side, yes, that is definitely infraspinous involvement. We've just shifted it over to this side instead and similar biomechanical patterns on both sides. Does that, I'll, I'll explain the actual anatomy to you afterwards, but does that kind of make sense to you? Perfect. All right. Get you to give yourself a tight hug here, please. Tight hug. You probably earned it. Yep, yep, okay. Now I'm going to get you to rotate as far as you can to the left, please. So we can get to about 50 degrees when we're rotating to the left. Now as far as you can to the right. We can get to a little bit further, maybe 55. Not that much of an asymmetry, so I'm not too concerned about that. Good. Relax for me. I'm going to get you to just stand up on the spot where you are there. Could you bend down, touch your toe? Oh, we got some knee cracking. Does that cause any low back discomfort no. there? No. Oh, she can get her palms all the way to the floor, oh. by the way. Very, very impressive. Oh, yeah. The straight yeah. legs, too. Perfect. Yeah, very <laughs> impressive. And I'll get you to stand back up, and I want you to extend backwards the other way for me, okay? okay. Do I just stand with my hand? How do yeah, you, you can put your hands there. Does that cause any low back discomfort? No. No? Perfect. All right. All right. So Julie was also mentioning that she gets some hip discomfort. Was that, that was on the right side, I believe? Okay, so we're going to do a hip... Saw. Uh, a hip range of motion screen uh, in relation to that knee pain as well as any potential lower back stiffness that she gets. So let's start with the left side. I like to compare the normal side before the symptomatic to get an idea of what the patient should be achieving. Uh, let's go ahead and bring this up. I'll get you to just relax this leg as best you can and first thing we'll do is internal rotation. So we can get to about 45 degrees from that angle. External rotation is, that's fine. Okay. Now on this side, bring this up, and we're going to do that internal rotation here. We can get to 45 degrees as well. That's good. Have you stretched yet today? 
Uh, last night. Last night, okay. Not today. Not today. And then that there too. Okay, now which of these movements, either this way or this way, do either of these bother the knee? No. No? Good. But I felt the hip on that one. On this one, you felt kind of the hip discomfort in there, right? It, it, when, like, you, can, you can test when you when you press down on it, mm. it starts to feel starts to, but So when you say hip, where do you feel the discomfort? So deep in, deep deep, in deep, the hip. Okay, deep, so that's, that is very much the hip region. It's always good to check the anatomy with the patient because a lot of people, a lot of my patients rather, be, they'll say, oh, they're, 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 their hip hurts, right? They'll say, okay, point to your hip. And they'll point to their SI joint up here. They'll point to like up here, actually like the flank region. So no, that's very much your hip. That's good. So we're going to bring this up in a full flexion. Any discomfort in the back of the knee with that? No. No? Good, good. Any discomfort in the hip with that? No. No, good. And then we'll do a scour test. So for this, are you okay if I compress through the knee like that? That doesn't cause any discomfort there? No. Good. All right, compressing through. Bring it up. Any pain in the hip with that? Ooh, Move wow. it there. Move what, it there. Where? On that outside Especially aspect on still. The, on the inside okay. of it. So one more. That right there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's my hip flexor or not. Do you know what I mean? Versus, mm -hmm. it's, it's right in here. Okay. So I'll get you to actually pull this leg mm -hmm. up into your chest as high as uh, you yeah, Straight. Pull, yeah, mm -hmm. Actually, just like that. Pull, 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 pull. Good. And once again, relax, relax, and do that one more time. Okay, so one thing that's worth mentioning is that this is Thomas test. I've done this before on camera, but when she does this, you can do that one more time for me. Okay, relax. Pull, pull, pull. I want you to watch right here. We see that this leg rises up as well. Okay, so this is a test to check for tight hip flexors. In this case, we have the psoas muscle, which I'll throw a diagram up there for you guys, that connects to the lumbar spine, comes down through the groin region, and connects into the femur. So you can relax this. In pulling up this side, and we get raising of the contralateral or the other side of femur, that's indicative of a, excuse me, of a hypertonic psoas muscle, so we're going to be working through that. Um, and also probably the rec fem and everything that's nearby, although the rectus femoris isn't our primary culprit in this case. I'll walk you through that on screen afterwards. Now let's do a lower back screen itself. We're going to do a straight leg raise, bring this up as far as we'll go, and you can get, holy, you are actually, that is the furthest I've gotten on camera, and maybe ever, in this clinic. So thank you for setting a new record, Julie. Never going to forget you now. Okay, that was, my angles don't even go that far. I've never seen past 90, so that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to bring this all the way up now, and that's, uh, I think I have a protractor in a drawer somewhere, but that's, uh, wow, one, what, not, maybe 150? 160, it's very good, okay. Your yoga, keep up with it, yes. okay? Yeah. So no low back pain with that, eh? Okay, I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna place my hand behind your low back here. Any discomfort with that? No. no? Good. And any discomfort with that there? No? Good, all right. So my hands are gonna be coming on your back now, okay? Right. So, feeling through. let's actually start with the low back here. So here she's on the right side. She's got a teeny bit of stiffness in the low back, but nothing too, too um, concerning at all. A uh, little bit more of a less spring, excuse me, on the right side as compared to the left. Let's feel up the thoracic. And let's also come off into the shoulder a little bit. How does in here feel? It's not bad. Actually. Not bad? Okay. Okay. Oh, freebie. Take a breath in for me. All the way out. Good. Good job. Uh -huh. All right, and once again in. All the way out. Interesting, uh, interesting sounds there. You okay? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can see how red your face is turning with your face down. Mm-hmm. This is interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. For those who are unaware, uh, Julie is the mother of my social media manager who's here filming today. So if you hear two people laughing, not one, that's not a bug on the audio. That's that's two people laughing. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So let me get my. Yeah. Just just okay. take take a breath. Okay. okay. Well, oh we, we, we can get so many different kinds of reactions for you and Justin. Truthfully, it's the truth. Like, he has such emotional release in some cases, which seems to be what's happening. So, yeah, we're going to take a pause. Drop, drop. So, Julie's got quite a bit of tension on the right side of her neck currently, especially at the very top in that kind of like suboccipital region. You feel that there, yes? Yeah, okay. So, we're going to start by just working that out with some MRT that myofascial technique so again I am taking a pin on that muscle and then stretching it out against that pin like that which doesn't feel great probably eh? but feels great after oh yeah it's the after effects Got a little bit on the left side, but it's not as bad. Let's start with that right side. That's what people click on the chiropractic YouTube videos mm-hmm, for, right? Mm-hmm. So, you okay? Yep. Yeah. Now, Julie's had her neck adjusted before, but it has been a minute. I think uh, with how tender she's feeling up there, though, definitely warranted. So I'll just actually just drop your head into my hand. That's good. So you'll see as she relaxes her head, the SCM muscle right there turns off. That's a good indicator. So once again, drop, drop. You okay? Mm-hmm. Good. The way that hand came up, I thought she was going to try to smack me real quick, but like thankfully it came back down. It wouldn't be the first time a patient has, uh, you know, unintentionally, of course, tried to do that. Drop, drop the head. Good. Good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna actually just pull you like this to get you off that shoulder. Good, and then you can hold right there. I'm gonna bring this up, straighten that bottom leg for me. Straight, straight, good. And then just relax in this position. Scooch the hips closer. Thank you. And breath in. All the way out. Good, good, good. Yeah. Out, 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 out. You okay? Oh. We got one there. Sorry, I just. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Okay. I thought the neck was gonna be hard. For we got it on yeah. that second try, though. That's good. You okay? Yep, yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> so, okay, you're good. Relax, relax. I'm gonna pull the hips towards. Good and then drop the hip good awesome okay i'm gonna move the mic just a little bit out of the way i'm out of the way awesome okay once again breath in and breath out quick nice and quick good and relax low back ah. there we go that one's good. yeah that one went a lot that easier okay. good all right so one thing that julie just uh kind of mentioned off camera is that she's recently 
self-published a book, which is really exciting, especially as somebody who does want to eventually public a, publish a book themselves. So Julie, why don't you tell us about that a little bit? Yes, yeah, very excited. It's my first uh, book. It's a children's book and mm -hmm. it's called Gemma's Great Adventure. And I am um, currently working on building a website and promoting that and uh, getting the message out that is, uh, you know, it's an adventure book, but ultimately it's a journey um, into the world and also a journey inside of uh, loving yourself. Oh, yeah. I like that. So like, is it, is it for sale right now? Like where could somebody buy this? Yes, it's currently, um, you can buy it on Amazon okay. uh, online and also uh, Barnes and Noble, but I am in the midst of working with Serenity Creative in developing a website where they can- I've heard great things about them. Fantastic, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, where people can buy directly from me and it'll be a little bit more of a cost savings because of the shipping and the availability. Also getting ready to promote through book fairs um, and like readings. I'd love to get into schools and just share the message with as many children, young and old as I can. Well, I'm going to definitely include the link to purchase your book online in the description of this because that's super exciting. I want to take a look at it myself. Uh, unfortunately, my sister's a little too old for that stuff now, but mm -hmm. I would have bought a copy for her if she was a few years younger, that's for certain. Well, that's very uh, mm -hmm. kind of you. Thank you, Adam. Well, thanks and for I sharing. just might have a copy for you in the car. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm happy to take it. And you know what? I can give it to the kids while they get their, uh, while their parents come in and get treated. They need something to keep them busy besides a screen. So... Unless they're going to watch my videos, then they can watch as many as they want, obviously. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Now, one thing just for the people on the camera watching, as well as yourself, actually, I'm going to be working both of your primarily infraspinatus muscles. So recall that the infraspinatus is right here. All right. It sits on top of the scap and connects into the posterior, the back elements of her shoulders. She was having the most pain triggered uh, during the external rotation movement, which is what the infraspinatus is responsible for doing. So it makes the most sense to me that that is where we target. That is what we try to clear up the mobility with. So this and then we'll just get into it shall we
the last thing we're going to do with Julie today, uh, remember that Thomas test when we were testing for the um, tension within the hip flexor and we got the elevation of the thigh here? That told us that we have a tight or hypertonic psoas muscle. Now the psoas, it connects from our lumbar spine directly. Okay, so if you can imagine for a minute the human body, we've got a lot of stuff in the way, we've got a lot of viscera, we've got a lot of guts, we've got our small intestines, but it connects off the lumbar spine, comes down kind of through the groin region and uh, into, well, into the femur. Okay, so how do we reach that? The way we reach that is that we find a little bony landmark, okay, that is, exists in the front of the hip region here, known as the ASIS, or the anterior superior iliac spine, okay? And in order to work that psoas muscle, we have to almost try to get underneath all of that stuff in order to target the muscle belly itself. So usually, this does not feel good, all right? I'm just gonna give you the heads up here. So if I'm doing this and it's uncomfy, expect that. If I'm doing this and it's extremely uncomfortable, let me know, we can just continue. Okay. So do this, I want you to bring this knee up and just relax it right there, perfect. I'm gonna get you to take a big breath in for me and a big breath all the way out. And as she exhales, I'm gonna place my fingers just inside of that ASIS and try to dig down. I'm also gonna get you to actually just turn your head to face the wall there, perfect, and big breath in. All the way out, all the way out. And try to relax that abdomen. Good, one more in, all the way out. Good, all right, now. I think I'm on it, not 100% sure, but the way we check is that I will get you to slowly raise this leg straight up, keeping the knee straight, okay? Go ahead. Okay, we're on it. And then slowly lower down. Now I want you to do 10 of those. You don't even need to lift it that high. You can go just like right there and then back down nice and slow 10, okay? And that's how we do so as MRT. Sorry that my body's in the way, but I need to be on the same side in order to get it done. I'm also really bad at counting. What was that? Six, seven, eight, 15, nine, 52, <laughs> 70. Wow, I really blocked out there, didn't I? Okay, good. Relax. Okay. So that's just part of the psoas. It's a big muscle. Okay, we also have to go a little bit higher. We have to go a little bit lower. So let's go a little bit lower. Again, we find that ASIS and we snake a little lower. Big breath in. All the way out. Good. Whoa, okay, this part's tender, eh? In. Not bad. I'm, I'm bracing. Yeah. And try not to brace all the way out, all the way out, all the way out. Good. Go ahead. Ten straight leg lifts. Ten straight leg lifts. You can, back. Press, you can press more. Okay, okay good. More. Okay. Whew. Yeah. There we go. All right. Six, I think. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Good. And we're going to do one more. Okay. One more set. Again, we find that ASIS. This time we go higher up to get more into the muscle belly itself rather than the tendinous aspect. Breath in, all the way out, and in, all the way out. Good, and 10, go ahead. You got it. Oh yeah, oh no, I definitely got it there, that's for certain. Too nice and slow. You're in no hurry. Six. Good stuff. Fantastic. And that's how we do a psoas release. Julie, how did you find all of that? It was quite a bit. Yeah. It was. Mm -hmm. And I have to say I was a little bit, um, I won't say frightened, but mm -hmm. apprehensive of coming course. in today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because I have not had the, this treatment in many, many years mm -hmm. and um, very sensitive to pain in my body. Yes. Uh, but you were great explaining everything. Oh. And. Mm -hmm. um, I can already feel the relief in my body, mm -hmm. especially in the upper shoulder and the neck region. So, um, yeah, you made a, 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 a little a tenuous situation very relaxing and um, it feels good. Well, thank you. I'm glad you did. Um, I try really hard to make patients feel relaxed when they're in here, and I think that every healthcare practitioner should go as out of their way as feasibly possible to help their patient feel better about the situation that they're in because like that in itself can contribute to a better prognosis than just kind of like raw data or science we do find that in a patient who is more relaxed more calm they get a better output or a better outcome than patients who are always anxious or tight or not uh, feel like their concerns aren't heard too right um, do you have any questions from today about any of the things we did or any other thoughts, anything things you want to share? Or? That's not an obligation, that's if you no, do. No, the question would be like what yeah. kind of physical activity, like mm. should I, can I do let's say this evening or mm. tomorrow, so I plan to 
go back to mm. yoga tomorrow. Yeah. Is that acceptable? Yeah, of course. No, so some people are concerned about getting any kind of treatment. So specifically Cairo, usually people uh, come in, get adjusted for the first time. They ask, hey, can I go exercise? Uh, the answer is yes to that. Now, usually if you haven't been adjusted before, if you haven't been adjusted in a very long time, I'll usually recommend like, hey, you know what? Maybe don't go set in any PRs. Okay, like, like don't absolutely push yourself because everybody responds a little bit differently okay but if you want to go increase your activity yeah that's actually recommended to do following adjusting anyways because that's how the joints get their nutrition okay joints are very weirdly vascularized compared to the rest of our body they don't have a very ready blood supply they receive their nutrition through passive pressures that are stimulated or excuse me that occur through regular movement so what that means is that in adjusting we free up the joint range of motion it's then on you to go take advantage of that range of motion through things like yoga, through things like resistance training in order to get the nutrition to that joint that it needs in order to thrive, decrease things like osteoarthritis and kind of stuff like that occurring. So yes, go exercise. Don't push yourself too, too hard off this first one, but after like, let's pretend that it's all good, which, you know, it will be all good. Um, follow up appointments. You can go do whatever you want afterwards. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Any other questions, any other thoughts? Is there anything that I should be doing post this in order to keep it limber? Are there certain stretches? Exactly what you're going to do. You're going to go exercise, right? I mean, like, yoga is, in my opinion, from, from somebody who doesn't even do yoga, okay? I've done yoga exactly eight times, and it's kicked my ass exactly eight times. But um, yoga is the best form of exercise you can do from a joint perspective, right. okay? So that is the best thing you can do. You're going to go do it. So give yourself a pat on the back in that okay. regard. Yeah. Great. Any other questions there? No, just want to thank you. Love it. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. Very appreciated. Look forward to seeing you again. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, Julie.